Hey guys, Will here. I'm back again with Sam, right. and we're going to be recording part two of our review of the Curse of the Orphan Rules. Today, looking at the Chaos Demons. Now, our first part of this looked at the Space Wolves, and it's actually the video that got likes the fastest in the history of my channel. So I thought we've got to do the second part because you know, if people are liking it, why not do more? So yeah, tonight we're going to go through the demon section. If you want to see part one, I'll put a link in the description to that. Um, but that's the Space Wolves. This is all about the demons. So, um, as uh, Sam, you've had, had a chance to read yeah. through this yet? I've had a, I've had a good read of it. Uh, I personally think the demons in this book are, get slightly better off than the uh, Space Wolves. That was at first glance, but then I I haven't had a game with the Space Wolves yet. But in the list building stage of doing the Space Wolves, looking at Iron Wolves and stuff like that, they've got some quirks to them, although a lot of the Space Wolf formations fill up your points before you get to your auxiliaries. So. Yeah, that's one thing I found when I tried to hammer out a few lists on Quartermaster. Um, the Space Wolf you core can... <laughs> formations, by the time you've got reasonable units to fill out your core, you then can only squeeze in the most bare bones of auxiliaries, but uh, I'm sure people will make it work. I mean, people are making Double Demi Company work at 1850, so, you know, I think yeah. we're going to see some cool space wolf formations. But enough about the wolves for tonight, although there will hopefully be a bat rep coming up with them soon. Tonight, it's all about the demons. So right. it looks like in this, the demons get a new formation. Yeah, like we get, the, uh, uh, a, get a Decurion. Um, I believe I've text, spoke to you over Skype about this one, but we'll go through it for you. Oh, so yeah. It's, it's got four core options, one for each Chaos God, so Corn, nice. Slash, Nurgle, Zinch. And it's one core, uh, one plus cores, sorry, and then 0 to 0, uh, 0 to 3 command, yep. and one plus auxiliaries. So that's pretty standard. So. I mean, Space Wolves get a few more command, but for most of the other Decurion style things, yeah. that's pretty cool. But you've got a, a nice range of what must be very different um, different core choices here. But before we look at them, let's see. What are our, uh, what are our um, command our benefits? Command benefits, right. So starting with the best one, um, I'll let you read it because I know it. <laughs> okay, Demonic Corruption. Objective markers controlled by units from this detachment count as controlled for the rest of the game, even if the controlling player has no unit within three inches of them. This effect lasts until an enemy scoring unit cleanses the objective by controlling it. So that's really cool. Basically, if a Chaos Demon unit claims an objective, then that objective is claimed even if they move away until an opponent captures it. So that's uh, going to really give useful. them a really good advantage in objective-based games, particularly what we play around here, which tends to be Maelstrom. Yeah, almost straight out of the book, Maelstrom. We do play a house rule of if you physically, if your list couldn't physically do the cards, you get to discard it. So if you draw a Highness Warp and you've got a Psyker in your list, get rid of it. Yeah. So that's all good for us but yeah that's uh, that's really strong and that's going to mean like yeah you're not e to beat demons off the objectives you're not just going to have to kill the demon units that's on the objective but you've got to get to objectives they've been on before it's all right if you're running scat bike elder but then you're turbo boosting all over the place just trying to keep the objectives down yeah that's uh, so. certainly going to be an interesting one to or think of something like um emperor's will mm. And you've got one in your backfield, then you can just focus on your opponent. Granted, they can turbo boost yours and clean yeah. it, cleanse it. Um, I think it's going to work turn. better with multi objective missions like the scouring and uh, the other yeah. one where you have six objectives. I think that's going to work nicely for the demons. But uh, yeah, um, it's, it's a good, it's a really solid good thing. Benefit. And it's better than objective secured. Objective secured, applying to troops, is good. But this straight out, you've got a better objective controlling mechanism than OBSEC. So that's, that's a good start. What have we got next? Next one. Uh, when rolling on the Warp Storm table, you can add one or subtract one from the result. Hmm. That's, that's amazing. That like triples your chances of summoning a unit. Yeah. Um, what, getting plus one imp onto your whole army. And it stops your army getting you'll, screwed over yeah, by some of the bad results. You'll never get a double one, so that's all right. Mm-hmm. Um, so just a really good benefit and you have to have a lot of units for these formations as well so it's even better that way because um, like each formation needs X amount of units in the favoured gods number 
Okay, so for yeah. corn you need eight units, for Zinch you need nine, Nogu you need seven, and Sinesh you need six for most formations. Oh, I like that. That's, uh, that fits it's the really fluff fluffy. very nicely, yeah. So with the Warp Storm, a little bit more control over it. Mm -hmm. um, if you're playing an all Sineshi I mean you draw the one that's corn, you can go, well, <laughs> um, I don't uh, want no. that hitting my own <laughs> units, so I can plus or minus it, so it's just a really good benefit to have. Brilliant. And um, then the last one, the Warp Unleashed re-roll demonic instability which again demonic instability is the equivalent to leadership <laughs> yeah you know it's like for those who used to play fantasy it's crumble uh for each lead point you found a leadership by after fat losing in combat you lose a model so it's really good yeah so re-roll on that could uh yeah so the, all of these are very solid and i would say as a set of benefits probably better than the ones the space wolves got. <laughs> by far space wolf ones were okay these are really solid they make demons who being chaos have had a tendency to a bit of randomness a bit of unreliability they bring that reliability back and uh, could uh, certainly boost them up to the level of power we're seeing from the other armies now you've just turned over to look at some of the new stuff but i just want to see the rest of the rest of this i so will get all to these formations at some basically point basically you've got four cores one for each god you've got two um command choices um one of which is basically just a big bad scary demon and the other one's a unit of demon princes and then it looks like each god has got two auxiliaries as well uh no what each god has one core one auxiliary and then there's okay. a few extra Oh, I see, Little yeah. gubbings. So, yeah, that, that's cool, though. So you Like, can... one of the auxiliaries is just a unit of Chaos Furies. <laughs> nice and simple. That's uh, going to be easy to fill up points in a small game. Or even just Karnak. Is it Karnak? Yeah, Karnak, the, uh, hound, the, the corn the, hound yeah, thing, yeah. the triple-headed hound. So, so, swing him in there. you got your auxiliary if you're playing corn. Boom. Brilliant. So this is great, because it means that you can use this to form a mono-god army or you can mix and match things to form an army of many gods, although the size of what you need for some of these formations... Will eat up your points, yeah. These, really that's one thing I do... do that bugs me about these formations. The cores eat up a lot of points mm -hmm. again. I mean, for the the, the uh, corn core, you need eight units and a herald. That's, so. that's a decent size army, and that's nine yeah. units. <laughs> Some games only have nine, ten units inside in them. So, uh, but uh, certainly for bigger games, which is what GW seem to be trying to get us to play because they want us to buy more models, works nicely. But let's have a look. We've got some uh, some new data slates up first. Yeah, so for some models that have come out since the Demon um, Codex um, came out. Basically, they added the free Corn Demon King Bloodthirsters, the Bloodthirster of Unfettered Fury, Bloodthirster of Insensate Rage and the Wrath Corn Bloodthirster and Scarbrand. Okay, so we've got four different Bloodthirsters in there now yeah. instead of the, the standard one from the book. So they added those four to the Demon Codex, which is nice. Um, reading Scarbrand's rules is quite funny. Um, he's only 225 points, so he's cheaper than any other Bloodthirster. Okay. Um, he's got Death Incarnate as his Wall Trait, which we will get to later on. He's got a Strength 5 AP Dash Flamer. Um, and all units in 12 Scarbrand gain Rage and Hatred. Nice, because the standard Demons of Corn, um, mark, basically the mark of Corn for Demons, is Furious Charge. Is Furious Charge. And Hatred Snesh. Hatred, so Furious Charge and Hatred Snesh. This means that units within 12 of him are going to have Rage and Furious Charge. Makes your Blood Letters free attacks on the charge, we're on to hit. It's pretty nice. <laughs> At strength four, strength, strength five. Because they're furious charge. At strength, strength five, five power weapon. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's uh, that's good. He's also got two melee weapons, slaughter and carnage. Uh, slaughter is strength user AP two melee flesh bane. Carnage is strength user AP two melee armor bane. So he has armor bane and flesh bane. So in effect, yeah, he's armor bane, flesh bane, with AP an additional two, attack and an additional attack. So he's got six on profile. That goes up to seven. And as for stats, he is a bloodthirster. Ten, just... ten, six, six, five, ten, six, nine, three plus. So he's only leadership nine. That's uh, disappointing. Yeah, there are a lot of demons low leadership now. But um, initiative 10, which is nice. Mm. And he's 25 points cheaper than most Bloodfirst, uh, even the cheapest Bloodfirst. He's only 225. Granted, he's not jump, he's just a monstrous creature. 
Oh, so he can't fly? No, he can't fly. He's got great big wings, but they're all torn up because in oh. the fluff he attacked corn. He got so angry <laughs> he actually attacked corn, and corn went. Good on you. I'm now going to throw you across my realm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so. uh, that's a new one. Actually, attacking the blood god in his own realm. Yeah, uh, yeah not going to work well for anyone. <laughs> so, moving on. So, yeah. Uh, the exalted flame of Tzench made it into this book. Okay, uh, this is the guy you get on the chariot, isn't it? Yeah, he he was in the FAQ release. So he's 50 points. Yep. He's weapon skill, ballistic skill four, strength four, toughness four. Three wounds, initiative four, three attacks, leadership seven. He's just infantry. So that's pretty sort of standard to low stat line there. Yeah. Good number of wounds, but he is a points. character. Yeah, yeah, he's a character. Um, special rules, he's a demon as inch, so he gets to reroll his ones and he's invulnerable. Uh, demonic instability, deep strike, independent character, and warp flame. Warp flame's the... If you cause a wound on you, they make a toughness test at the end of the phase. If they pass, they get feel no pain six plus or an improvement to said feel no pain, mm -hmm. or they suffer d d three extra wounds. Okay, so that so. that can go either way. But yeah. that's a pretty standard zinch thing, isn't it? Yeah, that is. And then the gift has got blue fire and pink fire of zinch. So blue fire of zinch is eighteen inch range, strength nine, AP two, heavy d three, warp flame. Heavy D3 <laughs> on a strength 9 AP2. Yeah, three shots. I mean, you blister skill 4, it's like a triple shot Laz cannon there. So he's, he's up there with like things like Ravagers and uh, uh, Predators, even. Uh, pink Flame makes me laugh. Uh, template, strength 5, AP3, Heavy 1, Torrent, Warp Flame. AP3 <laughs> on a Torrent Flamer. Yeah. That's not good. I'm, that's, they I'm... are both heavy, so he can't really move with them, and mm. there's no option here to give him a chariot. Although he has that in the book as standard, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, I think he gets a chariot in the book, I'm not sure. Yeah, in or the can be put on a yeah, chariot. Yeah, can be put on a chariot. As an upgrade, as, uh, I think it's in the war gear section you can upgrade mm -hmm. it with. So, well, that's alright. Well, I think though the chariot for, is like a separate choice, isn't it? For 50 points, you know, if you stick him in a unit of horrors at the back of the board, pumping out last cannon rounds, why not? Yeah, why not? Um, Bellacor is the next thing. Now this is huge, because Bellacor yeah. is one of the more popular Demon Prince choices, um, particularly in the tournament scene, but he's only ever been available in digital format before. Yeah, and, and in our local club we don't run digital at all. Yeah, um, a lot of tournaments got to be will have to say printed rules only, nothing nothing digital. So this so suddenly Bellacore brings Bellacor in, uh, Bellacore, <laughs> Bellacor into being legal. Yeah. So, I'm pretty sure you'll know his stats, but we're going to go through them. He's 350 points. 300. He is expensive. Mm -hmm. um, well, there's a reason for that. Weapon skill 9, blister skill 5, standard Demon Prince. Strength 6, toughness 5, so he's slightly tougher than your average Demon Prince. 4 wounds, initiative 8, same as your Prince. 5 attacks, and leadership 10. So, he's got 1 pip of toughness over a standard Demon Prince. Okay. Uh, his world trait is Herald of Doom. So we'll get to that a bit later on, because the help warlord traits in this book are big for the demons. Yeah, I think they've redone the demon warlord traits, Yeah, they've got they? four different tables depending on what gods you're choosing from. Ah, now that actually starts to make sense, because... And they're all yeah. amazing. The Sinesh one's a bit iffy. The Zinch one is, oh my god, amazing. Um, and the Corn one's really good. Yeah. But back to Bellicor, so he's obviously a demon. Eternal Warrior, which is nice. Fearless, better. Psycho level 3. Okay, so he's... Uh, psycho level 3 puts him up there with a really great psychers like Drago and Eldar Farseers. Um, and five wo uh, Toughness 5 does mean he would be vulnerable to railguns, but Eternal Warrior sorts that out. So yeah, so he's not going to get... Spends 10 weapons, I'm going to punk him. To be honest, the way you play this guy is he flies around casting psychic powers. Okay. So he's got this... Um, Special ability called Shadow Form. He has a four up invulnerable save, which mm -hmm. is nice, and a shrouded special rule. Furthermore, Bellacor automatically passes danger dangerous terrain tests. That's all uh, skills. Yeah, that uh, makes him very survivable. Four up invul, but to be honest, I would imagine with uh, a guy well, who can fly, you're just going to jink and then shroud. Yeah, yeah, jink and shroud, you get two up. Um, so. If you're not planning on casting much offensive psychic power wise, you can just jink. And then he's got all the other psychic powers. Um, so you've got Lord of Torment, is another rule. Uh, if an enemy model is falling back, 
an enemy unit is falling back and makes a morale check, Bellacore generates or fails morale check. Gener Hang on, I'll read this. If an enemy unit fails a morale check, Bellacore generates an additional D3 warp charge points in his next psychic phase. Now, does this say how far he has to be, or...? No, it's just if you fail a morale check. Oh, anywhere on the board? Yeah. Nice! So... That is really good, because demons generate a lot of morale checks anyway, because of all the fear tests. Yeah, it doesn't affect half the armies in the game. True, but... fear is uh, not what it should be, but uh, yeah, that's uh, useful. And then, last rule, Psyker. Bellacore knows all the powers from the telepathy does discipline. Okay. That's why he's 300 points, okay. or 350, because... That means he's got Psychic Shriek, Shrouding, and Invisibility, to, again, uh, together with the other telepathy powers, all straight out of it, and Invisibility, now that is huge. Tag team this guy up with something big and scary that, you know, doesn't survive well because it gets shot to bits because it's big and scary, like a Bloodthirster, a Lord of Change, etc. Yeah, you think, now you can have Bellacor and a Bloodthirster... Bloodthirst of Vincente Rage. Make in the them same invisible. Army. Yeah. Invisible. Invisible D first. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> so he's really good. He's got uh, the Blade of Shadows as his melee weapon. Plus one strength, AP two, melee, armor bane, flesh bane, mastercrafted specialist. So strength seven. Yeah, whole list of special rules there, and key there is his his AP two without being um, unwieldy. Which is always nice, although he is, he is that's pretty standard for a monster anyway. Yeah. But yeah, so, no, that's, so that's why he's 350 points. He's, uh, he's a big point sink, but he's, he's hell badass. worth it. He's really worth it. I'd pay 350 points for a cycle <laughs> like that. Right, so we're on to our core formations. Um, do you want to pause it? Yeah. Okay, sorry about that interruption, it was getting a bit loud up there, so we've had to move on down here. Um, so yeah, we're coming on to the formations now, yeah. and it looks like the way these are laid out is really nice. You've two got... Corn, two uh, sorry, two corn, yeah, two slanesh, sorry, two corn, two zinch, two nurgles. Yeah, so you go corn, corn, zinch, zinch, etc. And it means on one side you've got your core formation and you've got your auxiliary on the other side, which is really handy, because I think most people are going to try and match the core to their auxiliary. You know, if they have a corn core, they're going to have the corn auxiliary. If they're going to go mono army. Which I think... Some of the auxiliaries you go, e, will I really buy that many models of that box? Mm -hmm. um, but we'll start with the cores. Yeah, okay, so, so... The murder horde. Murder. So, for this formation, you need Skull Taker or a Herald of Corn. Okay. Which is really nice. And then eight units chosen from the following. Bloodletters, Flesh Hounds, or blood crushers. Okay, so that's basically all the normal corn stuff. You've Have got the three, flesh three corn units and the herald. Um, and that's going to give you nine total units there. So that's going to be a lot of points, but blood letters can be pretty cheap. What's a blood letter set you back these days? Ten points. Uh, that's fair enough. So eight and, points for eight of them. And hounds and crushers come in pretty small unit sizes, yeah. so it's certainly doable. But uh, what are you going to get for taking all of this? Right, uh, units in the murder horde add one to their attack characteristics while within six of another unit in this formation. When you've got that many units, you're going to be within six inches of a friendly unit yeah. from this formation. So and that's an extra attack across the board. Bloodletters, two attacks base, flesh hounds, three attacks, blood crushes, four. And then they get really the charge nice. bonuses and any other cheeky bonuses you've got. Yeah. So that, that's good. Um, then you've got Herald. Um, the Harbinger of Corn. Yeah. Um, all the formations have a version of this ability. Okay. But if the Herald of Corn from this formation, uh, from this formation is a lesser most. So they have the Lesser Locus of Abjugation, which I guess is an upgrade from the main uh, book? Right, each god has three Locus, one's Lesser, Greater, Exalted. Okay. Um, so Lesser Loci um, gives you Adamantium Will. Okay, yeah, so she um, has either Lesser, The Greater, greater gives you exalted. Fury, uh, not Fury, Rage. Okay. Um, and the Exalted gives you Hatred. Okay. You can take all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, do with that's like 50 points though on top um, but instead of affecting the unit he's with and him it's all models from the formation within 12. That's really nice because you're already going to have all these corn units and those buffs work with corn units mm. 
So that means instead of buffing his single squad of blood letters, because it's probably going to be blood letters that he joins, that's going to buff everyone around within a 12 inch bubble. And so you're just going to need one model from that unit within 12 inches of him, and the whole that whole unit's going to get it. So. That... And then if you're within six, you gain an additional attack. So on attack, charge your four attacks with blood letters, mm -hmm. five fresh hounds, six with blood crushers. And all those buffs spreading around. So that's. Uh, that's really good. Now, as a corn player, a very successful corn player, dare I say, how would you say this ranks up to playing the corn I wouldn't corn run it over Demon King. King. Um, just because we've yet to do a tactic on Demon King, which we really should do. Yeah, so I but, didn't want to put that out before the tournament because I don't want to spoil the surprise for anyone yeah, you might play. But I find Demon King Blood Type really adaptable. Mm -hmm. So if you're going for that invisible unit, you can buff up with your attacks. I mean, if you've got a Slaughter Cult, you can go Rage, add an additional attack, so you've got four attacks across your yeah, Slaughter Cult, mm -hmm. which is really nice, so you can buff up. If you're expecting to take more firepower, you can go for Feel No Pain. So I wouldn't run it over this, over... Uh, Corn Demon King. Demon King, yeah. Okay, that's fair enough. But it is a cool option if I want to run Demons. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot more in the Demon Codex that I would like to run. If I was running a mixed list... Yeah. I probably wouldn't run this just for corn. Excuse me. I would run it as a mixed list. I need a drink. Okay, no problem. Um, hang on. Can't reach Cut it. in one second. Sorry about that. With a bit of luck, we'll be going right through <laughs> to the end now. So that's your corn core formation. What about your corn auxiliary? Um, so your auxiliary is one herald and three skull cannons. Okay. Nice. You've already got two skull cannons, haven't no, you? No, I've only got one. You only got I'll one. I'll do one a second. But, um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, the Herald of Corn must take a blood throne. Uh, okay, the blood throne is like the skull cannon chariot. It's like the other yeah. kit, isn't it? Uh, the blood throne basically does what the Herald of Corn does, Harboring of Corn does. Oh, so it spreads his locus out. Yeah, gives him hammer of wrath. Okay. So the formation benefits. You get Harboring of Corn, which is the 12 inch bubble that was okay, in there. Okay, yeah. Core. And then I'll let you read that. Okay. Skull Rain Salvo. All skull cannons in this battery must be filled as a single vehicle squadron. While this formation includes three cannons they can f um, that can fire, the squadron can fire a single Skull Rain Salvo instead of firing normally. To do this, nominate one model in the squad as the firer. Okay, so it's like with Triple Vindicator when you're playing Space Marines, you've got. Sorry about that. No, I'm not missing a wallet. Okay, such are the perils of filming on a busy night down here. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, we are early. Normally yeah. we feel, feel a bit later, but oh, well, it's we want good. to get home earlier because of all the commanders Yeah, <laughs> we've got a two-day, six-game tournament tomorrow, so uh, yeah, we're going to need some sleep tonight, but we'll finish this up first. So yeah. so yeah, so it's like when you've got Space Marine Vindicators, you have to have all three capable of firing, and you nominate a single model that's able to fire as the firer. Let's have a look at the stats in this then. Uh, range 36, strength 8, AP 3, so that's an AP buff compared to what they normally get, normally AP 5. AP 5. Heavy 1, ignore cover, apocaly apocalyptic glass, so get your 5 inch templates out. Dread Skulls, okay what does Dread Skulls do? Uh, it's effectively, if you charge through terrain you gain frag grenades. Okay, so place a marker next to each unit that takes one or more hits from this attack, which should be a fair number of them with the apocalyptic blast. Uh, friendly demon units. Note that that's not corn demon units. Any friendly demon units. The charger units, so marked, do not suffer the initiative penalty. So yeah, basically you've got frag grenades when you assault something that's been hit by it. So that's so, uh, a, it's nice a cool formation. Uh, you have to take a blood throne, which is suboptimal. Um, hmm. With the harboring, is it just a formation? Yeah, it's only within the formation. So. Uh, the hero of corn. Units from this formation, yeah. Yeah, so, so uh, you wouldn't really take the um, the lotus on the blood throne. Admittedly, the blood throne has a static 12 inch bonus, mm. so which would apply useful. to the rest of your formations. Yeah, so that's just nice, kind of useful. But, uh, certainly, the way the cannons fire there, uh, you don't usually think of corn as firepower, but just take that formation three times an AP3 <laughs> apocalyptic large blast. You know, I'll, uh, I'll go for that. Strength eight, right? We're on to Zinch, okay? Zinch, the Lord of Change, <laughs> Warp Flame Host. So, 
This formation needs a changeling or a herald of Zinch, and then nine units chosen from the following. I see a theme here. Yeah. Pink horrors, flamers of Zinch, or exalted flamers of Zinch. Okay, yep, so that's um, all. Uh... You can run that relatively cheaply, considering an exalted flamer is 50 points, uh, flamers of Zinch are 23 points a model. So. Exalted Flamer, say you did it with Exalted Flamers, not quite sure why, I suppose Deep Strike Down and start popping out Flaz Cannons. Just, yeah, just have nine Exalted Flamers be like, suck Flaz Cannon rounds, bitch! Um, and <laughs> that's not going to be that expensive, because what, nine, nine of them at 50 points each like is going to be, points. yeah, 450, that's a cheap way to run your core. But I think most each players will probably uh, want to spam their Flamers and their, uh, their yeah. Pink Horrors. Um, I don't know. You've got Harbury of Zinch, which is the 12 inch low C bubble. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got lesser low C, which I can't remember what it does. The greater low C, I think, adds plus one to the strength of all warp flame attacks, mm -hmm. which is really good. Yeah. Uh, can't remember what the exalted one does. Well, basically, it's the same thing. Your locust doesn't just work on him and his unit, but instead, it's a 12 inch aura around him that catches all units from the formation. Um, very similar to the corn one, and then Storm of Demonic Fire, add one to the strength of any Zinchian flame weapons or psychic powers from the Discipline of Change, unleashed by units from a Warp Flame host. So with your uh, Lothi of Conjuration, I think, it's, I think it is, adding plus one strength to all your Warp Flame attacks, and then adding one to all your flame weapons and psychic power attacks, you're a plus two strength to all your attacks. That's is really, really nice. good because I mean they're strength four normally, aren't they? The yeah. standard sort of attack. So that brings it up to strength six, which is a serious. I threat. think warp flame, which is the basic primaris, is strength five base. Nice, nice. But we'll have to see because they've got we'll new psychic powers in here as well. Yeah. But basically, that's really upping the firepower of your zinch units and uh, allowing your locus to take place over a much wider area. So again, solid formation. I think more so with these other gods other than corn you people are really going to favor these Obviously, yeah. corn there's the demon kin option but um the, these are good what about the uh, the auxiliary there we've got a burning so, sky host yeah um it's another nine strong so you need the blue scribes or a herald of zinch mm -hmm. herald of zinch must take a disc or a burning chariot okay um nine units from the following screamers and burning chariots okay so you spam screamers and chariots yeah, so it's nice. Um, uh, Warp Flame is standard special rule. Harbringer of Zinch, which is again the low C 12 inch bubble. And that could be uh, be interesting, especially because the Burning Chariot has a Zinch and Flamer attack, doesn't it? Yeah, I think you can put a Flamer of Zinch on a Burning Chariot. So that... But you have to have a Herald, not a Flamer. Yeah, but I mean, you've got the other Burning Chariots there. Uh, no, I think it's the flame that has the, oh, okay, tank, yeah, not the it? actual chariot. Fair enough. So, but, um, yeah, that's You'd probably just put him on a disc at that stage. Yeah. And then you've got Tales of Transmuting Fire? Flame? Trails of Transmuting Flame. If a Burning Chariot of Zinch from the Burning Sky Host turbo boosts, pick an unengaged enemy unit that it moves over, that unit suffers D6 Strength 5 AP 4 hits. With the Soul Blaze and Warp Flame special rule, use the final position of the Burning Chariot for determining in wound allocation. Vehicles are always hit on the side. Okay, so you can turbo boost your chariots um, over units and do strength uh, D6 Strength 5 AP 4. It's a good AP, because mm. it's mid range, affect most alien races. Strength 5, anything toughness 3 or 4, yep. worries about it. You know, it's, it's nice. And, and then uh, furthermore to that, um, add one to number of attacks made by screamers of zinch from the burning sky host and resolve uh, all the attacks it's, it's okay a, so when uh, flamers make their slashing uh, not flamers screamers. screamers make their slashing attacks so they've already got the flyover stuff yeah they get plus one strength and soul blaze and war flame nice so that buffs right. both of them so this is a formation that's all about flying over stuff and doing damage which is yeah. uh, very very zinchy trying to not engage in combat it's nice um i don't know if i'd run it i don't like zinch personally that's because you're a pawn player you yeah don't like i don't like wizards at all to be honest 
Um, so he suffered on. at the hands of my fast seer too many times. Um, this is the one, the one sort of way I would go because I really like Nurgle. Mm -hmm. I just don't own enough Nurgle to be worth well, playing then them. You need to buy more Nurgle. Uh, mm -hmm. Not other rates. These boxes. The, I mean, look at this. How many of them do you need? And how okay, many of them yeah, do you need? fair enough. It's so ridiculous. We got the tally uh, band, which is the uh, <laughs> Nurgle formation. <laughs> hmm, that almost sounds like something. I can't Tally possibly band. think what. <laughs> They, did, they didn't think that one through, did they? <laughs> Possibly not, or maybe they did. Uh, so, anyway, you've got to have either a Herald of Nurgle or Epididymus, and then seven units of either Plague Bearers or Nurglings. So they're... Uh, it's a little restrictive on, compared to the others, but then Nurgle doesn't have as much as the others. No, but what he does have is solid and doesn't like to disappear. Um, so, the first one... Um, Distracting swarm, swarm of flies. Yay! Like, like the average um, nerd. Yes. <laughs> I say I've played a few flies. opponents who've got this special rule, I think. Um, enemy <laughs> units cannot fire Overwatch against units from the Taliban. Taliban. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to get that wrong oh, a few times. <laughs> so that's going uh, to screw over um, Tau again, isn't it? Yeah, so you can't overwatch them. It's really good. Mm -hmm. Admittedly, the whole unit's, the whole formation's slow and purposeful. So yeah, but once they make it to charge range, they're not getting, uh, not getting That's shot nice. at from Overwatch. Enfeebling nausea. I think I had a case of this once. Took a week off work for it. At the start of each combat phase, enemy units that are locked in combat with any unit from the tally band must pass a leadership test or reduce their strength and toughness by what nice so if you're locked in combat with um, units from this formation you have to take a leadership test and if you fail you're minus one to your strength and toughness so Which is uh, really good because if you fail that like, you're minus one toughness your average marine is toughness four your plague bearers are strength four poison four plus weapon so if you fail that not only do you get do i wound you on freeze but i then re-roll nice and toughness four is the most common in the game but also um if your toughness three, yeah, you're suddenly your you're suddenly on insta death. Eldar and guard characters will be insta death on a strength four hit, which rerolls to wound. Yeah, uh, that's uh, and you're not hitting back very hard as well. Mm. I mean, these are what T four base with feel no pain. Uh, they don't have feel no pain base, oh, okay. but they are T four. They have shrouded base. Oh, okay, so they're T four already. Uh, you can get feel no pain because you've got the Harbinger of Nurgle, which is the Loti bubble. So you've got another Loti twelve inch and bubble. Yeah, one of them is feel no pain. Which so. you're going to want with these guys, I think, because putting out a 12-inch Feel No Pain bubble on units that are already T4 shrouded, that's not going anywhere very quickly. Mm. So, it's got the most buffs out of any of the formations, because it's three different. Yeah. Uh, not being able to overwatch, minus one strength and toughness, and then the low C bubble. The interesting thing is, while the other ones buffed their... Um, their power they made them do more damage this one it's all about buffing the survivability these are getting towards necron levels of survivability with these nurgle yeah. ones you're on a five up five up there so which you know is uh, pretty solid right moving away from the uh terrorists <laughs> <laughs> the rotting swarm so in this formation you need a herald yeah and seven units of plague drones or beasts of nurgle Okay. So, plague drones are expensive and Beast and Nurgle are direct order only. So, so, this is why people might not be running this. Because it's a hard formation to obtain. I mean, mm. seven units of plague drones. Can you imagine that? What are they box these days? Uh, 30 quid. 30 quid for three. Yeah. And is three a good size or do people tend to run No, more? I'd run them at three. They're Especially if you've rigid. got seven units of them. And again, you've got the Harbinger Locus, so... Uh, they're all going to get the uh, get the locust buff, so they're they're worth taking. But yeah, yeah it's a it's a lot. But you know, people might come up with something creative. I'm actually sitting opposite a pile of tyranids here, and someone might be able to come up with something out of them. I don't know. Yeah. A lot of green stuff might be involved there, or <laughs> milliput. See last week's accidental advert. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. For, who who got back to that? Uh, that someone comment. replied. So thank you for that. I'll pass that information on to the guy who um, asked that when I see him. So first belt benefit is the harboring of Nurgle. You get your low T bubble. Yeah. It's the same with all these formations. Uh, corrosive swarm slime. Corrosive slime. You sounds like um, 
Yeah, but we won't go there. Yeah, no, let's <laughs> not go there, Sam, because I think I know what you're thinking, and it's wrong. Yeah. All units in a rot swarm have the hammer of Ref wrath special rule, and these attacks have poison four plus. Well, poison four plus hammer of wrath. That affects the beast, but not the uh, drones because they're cavalry. The drones had it anyway. Yeah. But it now becomes poison. So what's the strength of the drones? Four. So against standard targets, they're now um, not gaining yeah. any benefit, but against Toughness 3, they're getting a reroll, makes the Hammer of Wrath and slightly against better. against Toughness higher, you're getting, getting 4 plus. Quick, yeah. yeah, it's no bad thing. And then this one's really good. Okay. Dubious Command. At the start of each of the controlling player's assault phases, Herald of Nurgle from this Rot Swarm can attempt to direct a single unit from his formation that is within 12 inches of him. Okay, so you've got to pick a unit that's within 12 inches of your Herald at the start of your Assault phase. Uh, to do this, you must take a Leadership Test. Um, if the test is passed, the directed unit can re-roll failed charge rolls, and all models in this unit can make three additional attacks. Make three additional attacks until the end of the turn. If the test is failed, the directed unit must attempt to charge the nearest enemy unit in the charge subphase, but is otherwise unaffected. Okay, so your risk... four attacks bonus on the charge. Yeah, four attacks. That um, <laughs> what a play. It doesn't say it replaces, does it? No, it just says makes three yeah. additional attacks. So your plague drones are free base, plus one for the charge, and then plus three, so seven attacks per plague drone. If you're charging with three. 21 attacks from three drones with poison 4 plus. And they get to re-roll, um, being a faster sort of unit anyway. They're going to get in, what are they? Cavalry movement, so yeah. 12 inch move and then charge counts as fleet anyway, so it makes it slightly better. But aren't they slowing purposeful as well? Is it Nurgle? I'm not uh, sure. I don't know, we haven't got the demon codex to hand, it's but uh, I, I thought I'd bring a demon player along to know the rules. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know most of the demon rules. I'm, I'm not sure if they're slow and purposeful, don't quote me on that. Thought. It seems strange to be cavalry um, who gain fleet and slow and purposeful on top of that. It'd be really weird. Not that they affect each other, but it'd be really weird. Yeah, it just doesn't seem right, but yeah, basically you could have a massive swarm of what, three, three times Seven. Saying that you've got to pass that leadership test and heralds a leadership seven. Okay, that's so. uh, less than ideal, but you know, it's still slightly in your favour. But the disadvantage is yep, you just charge the nearest unit, but to you just set unit. that up so that you're going to be charging the nearest unit anyway. Yeah, you do that charge first. Mm. Moving on, we have Slanesh. Slanesh. Now, there's been rumours that GW are killing off killing off Slanesh. That may or may not be the case in Age of Sigma, but Slanesh seems alive and well in 40k. And quite frankly, they can't get Slanesh out of 40k. Because 40k is built on the foundations of Horus Heresy. And the Horus Heresy, Slanesh is too important to that. I mean, the whole story of Fulgrim and the Emperor's Children doesn't work without Slanesh. The Fall of the Elder doesn't work without Slanesh. They ain't you know, getting rid of him. They are not cutting Slanesh. Do not fear. If you want Slanesh and aren't liking the absence of Infamager Sigma, come over to the dark side and play 40k. Yeah. You have cookies. <laughs> so. So. Flare Troop? Flare Troop. So this is your standard Slanesh core formation. And as with all the other ones, you need your Herald or the character Herald, in this the case, mask the Mask. Slanesh. And then six units of either Demonettes or Fiends. So that's probably the cheapest one to do, simply due to Slanesh's number being six. Yeah, it's the smallest of the formations. But what it does do is it cuts down choice a little bit, because with some formations you get to pick, you know, it'd be three to six or something. This is set at six, which does mean it's a little, uh, little inflexible perhaps, but you can do flexibility with squad numbers and herald loadouts, for example. Yeah. So it's not completely set in stone. What do you get for that then? Um, well, you still got your you've got your high bringer of Slanesh, You got your twelve inch low C bubbles, mm -hmm. um, which is nice. Not sure what any of the Slanesh ones do. I don't like Slanesh. But Slanesh loves you. <laughs> oh, Slanesh Sorry, loves my ass. Nurgle's been there uh, with him, I think. <laughs> yeah, the two gods I would choose: Corn first, Nurgle second. Mm -hmm. The um, Emperor. <laughs> <laughs> screw the Emperor. <laughs> oh done. Wait. <laughs> it's heresy. <laughs> um, hang on one second. 
sorry about that brief interruption. We just had some inquisitors to deal with. Sam was uh, going to be declared exterminatus traitoris. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, back to these guys. What's the other benefit for your herald? Uh, sorry, uh, for your formation. So enemy units locked in combat with a uh, unit from the flayer troop reduce their weapon skill and initiative characteristic by one. Nice. There's no but test for this. It's straight up. It's a bit naff, to be honest, because... Demonets are weapon skill free, granted then reducing your opponent's weapon skill is you're still gonna be hitting on fours averages unless you're fighting gaunts or blood claws. Because mm -hmm. they're weapon skill free for some fucking reason. <laughs> <laughs> He's not bitter at all, honest. I'm just annoyed that a blood claw, you know. Uh, it's an issue at Space Marine, sure, but Space Wolves choose their warriors from the hardest troops on Fenris. Are like the hardest tribes, and they have lower weapon skill well, lower, than a Necron warrior, who is like a barely animated robot. <laughs> Think Terminator One, <laughs> <laughs> and you know a great so. Just, or yeah. they're the same weapon skill as a termagant, which is basically just an oversized bug. Yeah. yeah. So it really annoys me, but <laughs> enough ranting about that. So, so and, and they're initiative six. Mm -hmm. Are they so, five? Well, they're, they're high initiative they're anyway. They're higher initiative than most So that's standard. only going to be an issue against Eldar, who are, you've already got issues with, with Slanesh because of the whole um, Eldar. Eldar rules, uh, or uh, Gene Stealers and other Nids. Yeah. But to be honest, uh, Gene Stealers will mince, absolutely mince Slanesh units. I would never combat. take that formation for its formation benefits. So take it for the command benefits of the entire Dakuri style. Yeah. If you but were going to play a Slanesh bit, list. I'd probably run one of the other cores over it, because mm. it's a bit naff. The other thing, the one, one way I could see this working, is not looking so much to help your own Slanesh units with this, but rather helping your allied units. What's the weapon skill of a Bloodletter? Five. Okay, what else has weapon skill five that Bloodletter's going to want to fight a lot? Well, it kills anything because it's true. Combat, to be honest. Okay, maybe. Um, okay, uh, Nurgle. A ally they're, they're average weapon skill free, so it's not going to make a difference because you're even fighting four, so you're still hitting on fours, yeah. or you're fighting threes, in which okay. case they're squishy. I was anyway. trying to come up with something that was weapon skill four because this would make a difference. If you could, say, get a fast moving Slanesh unit like Fiends to do a multi charge against, say, a Space Marine. It might work squad. for the Fiends. I'm, I'm thinking for the. the Prospect of demonets. Yeah, I'm fiends, not sure about the stats on fiends. Fiends could be a thing because they've probably got better combat stats. They're certainly a bigger model. We'll have to see. It's but compared to the other formations, it's a bit poo. It's a little bit lackluster, but that's been the way Slanesh has been for a long time. GW seems to like to screw Slanesh, which is ironic since it's normally Slanesh doing the screwing. Um, <laughs> so their auxiliary, the Grand Cavalier, Cavalier, Grand Cavalcade. Cav that's just a weird word. <laughs> it's a real word, trust me. Um, so, you need one Herald of Slanesh, um, and that Herald must either ride a steed or a chariot, or an exalted Seeker chariot, and then you have to take six from the Seekers, the Hellflayer, or the Seeker, Seeker Cavalcade. What's the Seeker Cavalcade? Is that a... I don't... Does that mean... I reckon that means Seeker Chariot. I really think... I don't think Cavalcade's a thing. Back in one second. So Will's gone off to find a Demon Codex. Um, so you have to take Six of Foring, Six of Snesh, Hellflayers of Snesh, or Seeker, Caval Seeker Cavalcade? So I think that's a typo, which means Exalted Seeker Chariot. Um, so yeah, it's probably a typo unless we're getting a new model. Um, yeah, and of course your herald has to roll, ride a steed or a chariot, an exotic seeker chariot. So yeah, I think that's a typo. You're back. I'm back, yep, and I can confirm that is almost certainly a typo. Um, I think that's probably meant to be the not the, probably chariot. not the exalted, just the standard seeker chariot, because I think the exalted one has to be ridden by the herald. You know, you can get exalted seeker chariots that uh, are slightly better. We'll see. GW will hopefully FAQ uh, that and uh, resolve that issue. So all uh, Grand Cavalcade units can make an additional six-inch move when moving flat out or running. That's so pretty bloody good, um, considering the seekers of Sinesh, when they run, they run an additional D6 already. 
So they're, so now they're running, running 12 two... plus D6. That's... With a reroll because they're fleet. No, it'd be, tw uh, it'd be 2D6 plus 6. Because you roll D6 for their run, D6 for their bonus, and 6... No, no, it's plus oh. 6. Oh, it's plus 6, okay. It's plus 6 for their bonus. That's fast. Yeah, so they're running 12 plus D6. Okay. Um, chariots are obviously fast, so they're moving 18. Mm -hmm. No, they're moving 24. No, far, fast is 12. It's fast. Yeah, they're fast skimmers. Oh, they're I skimmers. They're I believe skimmers. They're, they're in contact with the ground. I think, well, it's either going to be, it's going to be a lot faster than they need to be. It's between 18. No, yeah, 18. You are right. Yeah. Um, uh, they've got the Harbinger Sinesh, really? which is Again? the low sea bubble. I hadn't expected that. <laughs> the low sea bubble's yeah. really good. Mm, um, not really sure about the Sinesh low seas, but. It's a, it's a good little way to and do then it. Chariots from the Ga Grand Cavalade, Infantry. Basically, oh, sorry, they flicked. do an, ex an extra D6 Strength 4 Hammer of Wrath. Which is nice. For all the chariots. You're doing D6 Hammer of Wrath already. So you're doing 2D6 Hammer of Wrath, or more if you're the Exalted. It's good for its speed, this formation, but mm. at the same time, meh. It's, yeah, again, it's Slanesh. It's not the uh, the best, unfortunately. Even in, in 30k, the Empress Children don't get the best buff. Slanesh just... Uh, Hasn't had much love from GW recently. I would say in the standard Chaos Marines Codex, Sunesh are really powerful if you have an army of Noise Marines. Because mm. they're all salvo weapons, it's like one of the first times you've got proper salvo weapons. Yeah. And then there's psychic powers in there which buff the strength of psychic uh, mm. salvo. So you could make a really strong Chaos Marine army with Sunesh. But, uh, but the Chaos Marine Codex actually, is still crap. Yeah, then you actually have to get hold of all the resin or metal parts yeah. to make all those. <laughs> so, you so, know. We're off and out into auxiliary formations. So, so we'll, we'll go down as. Um, as for the formations of the gods, yeah. which ones do you like? Um, hang on. Well, I, I've i always quite had liked corn. I think the corn one is good. Um, but they're all very similar, aren't they? They're essentially whichever pick your god and your formation will buff you to about the same extent, maybe a little bit less than Sinesh. The Nurgle one's quite nice as well, yeah, if you want I a could, really solid I could see block. myself running the core of Nurgle, um, the Skull Cannon one from Corn, mm -hmm. and maybe the Rotting Swarm, so the uh, Cavalry ca one, if I were to run Demons, those are probably the three I'd aim for. Yeah, I mean, and the thing is, you can bolt on different ones to two different ones. Certainly the Nurgle one is going to give you an incredibly resilient core to your army that can just slowly shamble forward. The thing is, these two auxiliaries together, the, uh, the Taliban and the Rotting Swarm, would probably take up 1850. Yeah, that's true. But I think that's kind of how it's designed. I don't know if that's a deliberate... The, the thing is then, you don't have any big beasties, you've just got troops and a bit of cavalry. Mm. So you don't have any demon princes, you don't have any bloodthirsters, you don't have any greater demons. What I would say is depending on how you work your points, you could squeeze in some of this other stuff. Like as an auxiliary that doesn't have its own data card, for example, you can have just a unit of furies. You can have soul, oh, soul grinders, you have to take in threes. Uh, we're going to go through, there's two more yeah. formations to go through for these areas. And, you can and have, for your command choices, you can have um, Bloodfirst, Bloodfirst, Bloodfirster, Scarbrand, Fate Weaver, Kugrath, uh, Kugath, Plague, the a Plague Father, yep. uh, Lord of Change, Great and Clean One, Keeper of Secrets, Bellacore, Doom Prince. So any of the big monsters. But at the same time, yeah, you can have a command, but would you have the points to fit it in after the, the core and the auxiliary? I if think you that's going to gonna have to be something. I think if you take minimum squad sizes, you should. How yeah. much is a plague bearer? Uh, they're ninety points to ten. I do believe the the plague drones are like forty-two points each. Okay, so so they're quite expensive. Mm. So one hundred twenty-six for you. And you've got to get two heralds, but heralds are cheap. <laughs> I yeah, think that's heralds something... are cheap, but you'd end up, you'd spam the low seas, so yeah. they'd be over 150 points per herald. I guess you'd pick which low seas you want for which formations, particularly with the opposite. Excuse me, sorry. Particularly with the auxiliaries, yeah. not all your low seas might help your auxiliary units, so yeah. you just have to say. Certainly something we're going to have to points out and see how it's going to work. So, 
Now on to the command choice, because you have one new command formation in here. Uh, the Infernal... Tetrad. Tetrad. So this formation, you have to have four Demon Princes. But each Demon Prince must have a different God alignment. So you have to have one from Corn, one from Nurgle, one from Tanesh, and one from Zinch. And... Yeah, each Demon Prince must have an upgrade for the different characters. Yeah. So it's four Demon Princes of the uh, four Gods. While... The Demon Princes are alive, you get bonuses depending on how many there are alive. Okay. So if there's four alive, you get plus one toughness. For three alive, you get plus one strength. For two alive, you get to reroll ones to hit. Mm -hmm. And for one alive, um, sorry, for two alive, you get to reroll ones to hit. And one alive, you don't get any bonuses. And they stack. So when so, all four are alive, you get plus one toughness, plus one strength, and reroll ones to hit. Nice, so strike hard because your benefits are going to go down if you start losing models. Um, but that, oh, four demon princes, though, that's a lot of points. That is a big point sink. Considering, like, three of them are going to want to be upgraded to psychers and wings, and the corn one will probably be foot slug and deep, deep strike in my mind. Uh, might put wings on him for a laugh, but at the same time you want to keep him alive and out of combat because you want to keep the rest of you guys tough because it makes your, your Demon Princes tough and six. Yeah, because they don't have to move, well they don't move as a formation do they? They're no, all, uh, they're all, separate. all separate. So that uh, uh, just means they're not concentrating their then, power on one spot unless you want them to. And then we've got shared power which is a really good trait because we're about to get to Warlord traits but um, if your Warlord is chosen from this formation, all models from the Infernal Tetrad also have the same wall of trait, even if chosen from a royal wall of trait from this book and a different demonic alignment. So okay, that's cool. So they all gain one wall of trait. You roll for it, they all gain it. That's cool. There's so some really good traits in here. I have to uh, stay tuned to see what those are, but that's uh, certainly a nice little buff there. And it's a, it's a fun formation. Stuff. Brings the flying circus back. Yeah, say so Demon Prince spam was a thing back in Sick Dead, so that could be... You could uh, just take this formation three times. Yeah, because you don't actually need to take a core. You obviously don't get the benefits for the Decurian style formation, but... But then, 12 Demon Princes. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck me. Right, then we're on to the, the Forge, Forge host. host. So this is the first of our new auxiliary choices. So you need three Soul Grinders. No restrictions, just three, three Soul Grinders. Uh, each time a soul grinder from the forge host inflicts an enemy casualty during the shooting phase or assault phase, all other models from this formation can re-roll, fail to wound, and fail to hit and fail to wound rolls to the end of the phase. Okay, so so you hurt something, you get to re-roll to hit, re-roll to wound. Nice. It doesn't even have to be from the same unit or anything, does it? It's no, just one of them shoots something. So you take a shooty one. Um, shoot something with it, it will probably kill Summit, and then, uh, yeah, the others will get to re-roll to hit and wound until the end of that phase. It it's is a nice little buff. Soul Grinders specific. are really good. Um, I mean, I could Excuse easily see me, myself really running third in my KDK if I had the money to get oh, third. I would not like that at all. Um, they are really good, aren't they? They are. I mean, they're they're tough only... to deal with because their rear armor 11, so at, you can't even get in behind them. At the most expensive, they run at 165. Hmm, not even that expensive. So, yeah. Right. Certainly one if you want to run a lot of soul grinders. Got some nice book art. Space wolves fighting demons. I do like Games Workshop art. Yeah, so they are very good at taking pretty pictures. Wall of Traits. Here we go. So Four this... tables, one for each god. <laughs> right. So we've got um, a lot of them here. I'm just going to take a little while to look at these and digest these and be back in a second. Okay, I had to cut the video there because it got too long and had to split it into two parts. Uh, but fear not, part two will be coming up very shortly, in which we're going to be looking at the relics, the psychic powers, and the warlord traits. So stay tuned for part two.